Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspraces.com. It's the Floor Afghan for September of 2019. We're gonna continue now with the fountain in the square and this is the sixth of the seven squares that we're gonna be playing with. All the instructions are right here and if you go to the more information of this video you will find a direct link to be able to download all of the versions up until the current version. Once we have done all of these then the complete book will be a downloadable for you. So let's get started with the Floor Afghan for September. So let's get started. This is the mini me version. Obviously the big one is much bigger than this. This is just using Peyton's Grace and I decided to have a little bit of fun with this. Now if you know me you know that I like texture. So this one here has a three dimensional lift to it very much and it reminded me of, like of a water fountain and these were the sprays that are coming out. I know, I know, I make it up as I go. But um, I was really quite inspired by this and what we're gonna do today is that we're gonna get ourselves started. You see the back looks really good. So if your afghan ever turns upside down with this particular square you're not gonna have to worry about it. So we're gonna be doing lots of layering today in order to work our way through. The instructions are provided. We're gonna be using a six millimeter size J crochet hook and I'm gonna be using an assortment of just Karen one pound. Obviously the floor afghan was done in a certain kind of blue tinge. That's completely up to you. Remember the colors are up to you because you are the creator and the artist at heart. So without further ado let's get started. Let's pitter patter and let's get at her and uh, we are gonna get started right now. So let's begin. We're gonna create a slip knot and we're going to chain four and this will count as a double crochet and chain one. So let's begin to do that. So we're just gonna go one, two, three and four. Now in the fourth chain from the hook which is the very starting one what we need to do is that we need to put in one double crochet and then a chain one and we're gonna repeat that ten times. So you'll essentially have twelve spokes going all the way around this thing. So go to the fourth chain from the hook just count it back. So one, two, three, four, or it's the first one, whatever you prefer to look at and then just do a double crochet and then chase it down with a, a chain one. So continuing to do that, so just double crochet in and chain one. So please do that all the way around. So you should be able to count 12 of these uh, posts. So one, two, three is already done and you should be able to do that now. So continue now with round number one. So as you come back around don't forget to do a chain one after the last double crochet and I want you just to attach it to the top of the first of the third chain up of the original. So you should be able to count a total. So just attach with a slip stitch and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this yarn and just for the fun of it. I'm only gonna show you one time on how to get rid of yarn throughout this whole tutorial. So you can just snip it if you want to. Well obviously if you're changing colors you're gonna have to. So just weave it through. Now depending where you are in the project you can use a tapestry needle or you can just weave it in and out of the project which I have done for most of my uh, flora. So you just weave it in enough so about two inches or so and what that will do is it'll get stuck underneath the stitches then for round two. So if at the very end I'm gonna show you how to use a tapestry needle. So make sure that you can count that there's 12 posts going all the way around and uh, we're gonna carry on. So I would recommend getting rid of your loose ends as you go. So let's continue now to round number so let's get a new color ready. I'm gonna show you what is called as a standing single crochet. You can attach and chain one and still do two single crochets in a chain one space or you can just start off and immediately do a standing single crochet. So in order to do that start off with the slip knot on the hook first and just jam it between two posts. So go right into a space. Now if going in just wrap the yarn pull through but don't pull it through the first loop yet and make sure that you can see two loops then yarn over pull through two. That's a standing single crochet. I want you to put another single crochet in that same space. Just like that. So round the next post we wanna do a single crochet front post. So just going in behind the post. So come down the side of that post and pop it out the other side and pull through and then pull through two. So it's going around that post. So in the next space between the posts two more single crochets. So one and two and guess what you're doing with the next post. That's right a single crochet front post. So just coming up from the side and do that and then two into the next space. I want you to do that all the way around for this round. This is round number two. When you come all the way back around don't forget to do that single crochet in the front post around the last post. Now you've already done that first space so just join it to the first single crochet with a slip stitch just like that. So you'll feel like it's a lot of stuff going on in this particular um, round number two. Think about it you've gone from 12 
stitches now to 36 all within one leap. So this is kind of stuff that gives you texture. So let's get rid of this yarn. Let's play with something else and let's move on to round number three. So let's continue on to round number three. So I want you to put a slip knot onto your hook first. Now looking at this what I want you to do is that I want you to identify what is the single crochet front post that we did and you're only gonna play within that st uh, stitch all the way around for number three. So to get started what I want you to do is just pick any one of the single crochet front posts. It's gonna be tight because it's a single crochet front post so it's automatically tight. So just getting it in is gonna be a little bit tricky but this is what provides the texture on the floor afghan that you love. So let's just get ourselves started. And let's slip stitch. So just pull through. So I want you to leave the straggler so it's in front so that you can trap it and I want you to chain three. So because you attached it in the front post single crochet this is gonna be classified as a double crochet front post. Now in the same one I want you to apply two more double crochet front posts. Once you grab it once it'll be easier to get the second time. And go right up over top of the straggler so that you can bury this in. Now you don't want that straggler carrying on into the next set of stitches. So just throw it in behind the project for now. And what you can do is just move on to the next single crochet front post. So just looking at it and just going in. Just take your time. It's not a rush. And just get your front post. So why did I develop this? <laughs> That's the million dollar question at this moment. It seems pretty tight to me. Maybe I'm tight today. Um, it's pretty, pretty awesome. So let's continue and so let's keep looking for the next front post here and let's just put in three more double crochets. So these are the front post double crochet or double crochet front post however you want to call it. So I think technically it's double crochet front post by the standards of crochet just so you know. So there are rules as you can see. So now move into the next single crochet front post. Just do it again. So apply three double crochet front posts into each one of the single crochet front posts all the way around and I'll see you at the end of round number three. So once you come all the way back around just join it to the top of the chain three and let's get rid of this yarn and let's play with something new. So you'll notice it's kind of buckling in a little bit. That's fine. Uh, it will settle down so you just gotta stick with it. So let's get rid of this yarn and let's continue into round number four. Okay let's begin round number four. Just getting another fun piece of yarn and what we're going to do is just start to have this to be a little bit better balanced. So what we're going to do is that I want you to come in between a space of any of these three front post double crochets groups. So right into the space please. And just going in and I want you to do a standing single crochet. You can just, you can uh, do a slip stitch and then a chain one and then a single crochet or you can just skip the whole thing and just pull through and make a standing single crochet and be done with it. It's up to you. Your call. You are the creator. So all I need you to do with this one here is that I want you to apply one single crochet into each one of the stitches. Okay, of the ones of the front post double crochets that you see and then including the space between the groups of three um, front post double crochet. So okay so let's do that. That is round number four. Let's continue that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Once you come all the way around just slip stitch it to the top or to the beginning single crochet and let's get rid of that yarn now and let's continue on our journey. So let's uh, continue now to round number five. So as we continue into row number five what's gonna happen is that we're gonna put these ones that jump the way down like so. And so those ones there are around the same front post uh, single crochets that we have but because you've already pulled it it's easier to have access to. So you want a color that really kind of jumps out probably stands off from the background and it's gonna be kind of fun. So what we need to do is we need to pay attention to where the stitches are. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna immediately we want to get the middle one of the grouping of three to be the one that jumps down. So once you jump down that that is that stitch. So don't make sure you don't put an extra stitch into this one here. So then you'll have one, two, three and then jump down with the front post treble around the existing where the green is. And so we're gonna begin to do that then for round number five. So let's begin round number five. So what you can do maybe what I would do if I were you start off right the one that is in the gapping space. 
and let's just do a front post, sorry, a standing single crochet and let's just join it like that. So the next one is gonna be a, a single crochet and then the next one is in the middle of this green. Do you see it? Just jump down. So just wrap the hook twice and then just come around the same single crochet front post that you already did in round number two. Okay and just come all the way back up to the top. Notice that I was careful about that. I wanted to make sure going around the same post I don't want to accidentally grab around these three. So that is that stitch that is right behind the middle one. So you immediately jump to the next one. So single crochet that one, the next one and next one and the fourth one should be the middle one again and it is and you're gonna do a front post treble around the single crochet front post in round number two. So take your time to do that and this will provide a nice overlay that you'll see and it'll be a nice accent coming later. So remember that that stitch is this one here that's in behind so make sure you jump to the next one and three in a row and then down again. Please do that all the way around. This is round number five. So I'm coming all the way back around. I'm doing my last front post treble coming in. Everything is really tight on this square. Um, that provides so much beautiful texture that you see. So then I just gonna finish the last stitch and then I'm gonna join it to the first standing single crochet that I started with. Just like that. So what I decided to do with myself is that I kept this color going for the next round and again that's completely up to you on how you would like to do it. So um, I'm gonna do that just to honor that and let's continue. So let's continue into round six. I'm gonna chain one and if you wanna rejoin new yarn you can do that if you want to as well but it's just one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around for round number six. So this helps stabilize it um, even further um, for your benefit. So just do one single crochet in each and then we're gonna get rid of the color at the end of this round. So do that for round number six. Coming up to the end of round number six just join it to the first single crochet. Let's get rid of this color and let's move on now to round number seven which is the modified treble front post. Let's begin to do that next. In round number seven we're gonna be doing the modified treble front post and that is these right here. So this is going to be consisting of essentially two uh, front post trebles together in order for you to be able to have success with this. And you'll notice that the stitch counts are still the same. So it's 48 round uh, stitches and this round here there will still be 48 when you finish this one. So essentially we have to come backward to get this one and then we have to go forward to get the other one in order to align it to the middle one here. So let's uh, begin to do round number seven. Let's grab some fun yarn and let's begin. So let's create a slip knot and then we'll talk extensively about this one. This one is the one where people are kind of confused on. So you gotta remember that you have a front post treble here and here. And so if you remember that there's three stitches in between these. Okay, so if you look at it and take out these you see three. So the middle one is where we wanna do the modified and when we do the modified we wanna reach back to here and then we wanna reach forward to here in order to create that. So what I'm recommending that we do is that we start right above one of these here, the front post treble. So let's do that one and let's just join it with a um, standing single crochet to begin and pull through. So we're gonna single crochet into the next one, okay? And then we're gonna do a modified treble. So in order to do that what we're going to do is that we're gonna wrap the hook twice and we're gonna come back to this one. So come backward and wrap, okay? And then pull through but don't, and then pull through two and two but don't you dare finish that, okay? Now we're gonna reach forward to grab this one. So wrap in the hook twice, come to the next one. Pull through, pull through two and two. So now you have three loops on your hook so pull through all three and that finishes the modified. So this one is considered the middle stitch of the one that's right directly behind and so you're just gonna single crochet the next three single crochets. So one and two and three and then begin another modified. 
So what we need to pay attention to is the most is that we gotta make sure and I think what I'm doing here is that I'm actually missing a stitch here and it's not because of that it's just because I slip stitched. So let me just uh, redo that one. So I wanna leave this in the video because I think it's important that you see um, how you can uh, alter things. So it looks like I have an extra stitch here. So what I can just do is that I can put two things together. So two single crochet together to bring it closer and then like that. And really it's not gonna be that much more noticeable once you get more done. Now we're gonna do a modified again. So let's wrap the hook twice, come backward to get this. Okay, and we don't wanna finish it and then wrap the hook twice and go forward to the other one. And then pull through all three loops when ready. And then that is the middle one so just kind of manipulating it here and continuing along. So there's three single crochets in a row so I'll show you one more time. So wrap the hook twice, come backward to get the one that you were just on and then don't finish that and then jump forward to get the next one. Okay and then I wanna look for it. So the, the middle one here is the one where I am so I wanna jump to the next one and I wanna do this all the way around. So this is the modified front post treble. So don't forget to go backward And then don't finish it and then go forward. Like that. And then do the next three. So please do this all the way around for round number seven. So as you come all the way back around, then what's gonna happen is that the next modified is gonna be the one that is already there in the back. And then we have to modify, uh, pick up the one that's already modified that you started with to conclude that so it finishes it off. And then there's only technically one stitch left because we started off in the middle and then just join it to the top of the or to the beginning single crochet just like that. So let's get rid of this color and you can see it's looking pretty good. Uh, it's got a lot of super texture to this and let's continue then into round number eight. So let's continue into round number eight. It's a nice easy round and lots of easy to be able to identify. And so what I want you to do is I want you to come in the top of any of the modified um, uh, uh, modified treble, uh, front post, treble front post, sorry. So we're gonna come into the uh, top of that one and what I want you to do is that I want you to attach with a slip stitch and then chain three. So that will count as a double crochet. In the same one I want you to apply another double crochet. So this round is really quite easy. So we're gonna double crochet each of the next stitches until you see the next top of the next front post um, modified treble. That's a mouthful. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna just push this in behind. So here's the next one. So we're gonna put two double crochets in that one. So there's gonna be two double crochets in the top of each of the modified front post trebles. And then just carrying along, then just put in one double crochet in the rest of them as you're going all the way around. Please do this and this is round number eight. So carrying on and I'm just finishing up the final few stitches and we're gonna just join it to the top of the beginning chain three. Get rid of this color and let's play with something else as we move into the next round, round number nine. So let's continue into round number nine and if you look at this one here, this white section, this is number nine coming down in. So you have single crochets and it will jet down and so when we come around here we wanna make sure that it's going to jet down and capture in behind these two at the tops of each one of these peaks. Let's begin round number nine. So as we begin round number nine, we're gonna be breaking the rules a little bit. So remember last time when we did the modified, it counted as the stitch that it was in front of. This one here, we need to go from um, 60 stitches around to 72. That means that every stitch is in play and the ones that are drop, uh, dropping down are an, an, are an extra stitch. So let's uh, begin and we are going to then just start off. You can just, uh, just kinda look where things are. See where it's got two is right in there. So you're gonna single crochet. So let's just do that. So let's just attach to the first one of where there's two and let's just do a standing single crochet. That's a good place to start. And then what I want you to do is a front post treble down in here. So wrapping twice and coming in behind. Pull through, 
pull through two and I want you to finish it. It's not a modified. And the very next stitch that is in row, technically this would be that, that stitch but I want you to just peel it back and the very next stitch is a single crochet. So just continue to single crochet until you get and see where two are into the same stitch. Now if you get this, okay this is caused by a slip stitch. I'm gonna show you how to get rid of this. So if you go into the stitch, pull through and where it's joining, okay, it looks like it's an extra stitch but it's not. So just go right into the joining and pull through and then pull through all three. And what that does is it makes it look closed. So come into the next stitch and so it looks closed without adding any stitches I should say. So now coming straight down front post treble and then just peel it back so you can see it and the very next stitches are it. So I'm gonna show you one more time. So just continuing along. So I'm looking for where the two double crochets are in the same stitch. So do the first one of the two and then front post treble down and then just immediately start in the very next stitch. So just peel it back if you can't see it and carry on. This is round number nine. So I'm coming all the way back around and I just want to just continue to single crochet and then join it to the first single crochet that you had. So that's gonna conclude this. So really the co most complicated stuff of this pattern is now done. Um, now we're just gonna have some fun and just sit back and relax. So really lots of concentration in the very beginning of this one but we're now moving on to round number um, round number 10 and it's gonna be a fun one to go. So let's uh, continue then to round number 10. So let's begin round number 10. So let's quickly verify. So we have five single crochet stitches that are here and then we have one front post a treble that comes down. This time here in round number 10 is that we're gonna do the increase and we're gonna do it around this post here and it will be a double crochet front post so it's a nice easy one. So what I would do probably just start you know the one before that stitch just it's kind of easier and then just attach it and then chain three and that counts as your first double crochet. So immediately just come to this one here and just uh, put in two double crochet front posts around the same post. And then immediately start in the very next stitch um, with, with you and uh, we're just gonna immediately just put in five um, double crochets in a row. So let's verify that. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Now technically I wouldn't count that if it were me and I were you but uh, you can if you want to and then it's gonna be two front post double crochets around uh, around the next one. Sorry I was doing a treble there for a second. I just immediately just jump to the next stitch and just put five double crochets in a row. So please do that all the way around for round number ten. So let's continue then and finish this round. This is round number 10 and now what I want you to do is pick an outstanding color that will be the ring color that is existing in the square. So it'll be the standoff ring that surrounds this. So pick a color that would be really quite awesome. I think actually the pink here would be really quite a great contrast for me and we're gonna continue this uh, same concept. I learned this particular idea from another designer many many years ago and I just like the whole idea of this and actually if you've done one of my other patterns called stitch stop and roll you will notice that it's the same idea as well. So you just do that and then roll it back and then it will sit down. So let's get rid of this color. Let's get on a fun color and let's begin the next round. So let's begin round number 11. Let's create a slip knot and let's just join it and we're gonna only join to the front loop. So if you're new to crochet the stitches are made up of two strands. The first strand is the front loop and the one furthest away from you is the back loop. Only play in the front loops this time. We are not gonna grow anything at this point. So the next uh, three rounds we're gonna just keep it all the same uh, particular size. Actually it could be the next four rounds. Uh, 84, 84, 84. Yes so it's four rounds. So just going into and joining it to a front loop and just chain two. This does not count as a half double crochet. In the same stitch I want you to apply a half double crochet and continuing in the front loops only and so critical just continue just to go all the way around and just apply one half double crochet in each of the stitches going around. Because you're going into the front loop this causes a natural fold within the project so then you will see that the ring will just wanna uh, just jump right off 
the page and that's the whole point of this. So let's uh, continue and just half double crochet in the front post or sorry the front loop of every one of them going all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm just coming up all the way around on round number 11 still continuing to do a half double crochet and what we want to do then in round number 12 and 13 is both the same. So let's just join it to the top of the first half double crochet not the chain two because the chain two doesn't count as anything and all I need you to do is just chain two again and it does not count as a half double crochet and just half double crochet into each of the regular stitches now. So we don't need to worry about the front loop at this point. So the next two rounds round number 12 and 13 are both the same and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this back. You will notice that it's bowling in front of you but we're gonna fold this back and then it will get it to sit down. So please do rounds number 12 and 13 one half double crochet in each of the stitches all the way around and I'll see you at the end of the round number 13. So I just finished up at round number 13 and you'll notice it's really bowling at this point so don't worry about it yet. Let's fasten off this yarn and let's go for round number um, 14 and 14 I'd recommend a different color uh, completely. I'm gonna use the same color as the green and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this back and then you will have the beautiful ring that is existing on here. So let's uh, deal with this next and I will see you now in round number 14. So round number 14 I'm gonna start off with green and what we need to do is that we need to fold this back and we're going to just create a one single crochet in each. So the green that already exists here I'm just gonna use the same color but what we're going to do is that you're just going to just you can grab any one it doesn't really matter because you're not increasing any stitches but just go in the top of one and immediately just fold it back. So just go like this and see where it goes straight back. Okay and that's where you're gonna land. And once you get the first one it all should align because it's the same stitch count. So you're just gonna pull through. I'm doing a standing um, single and then pull through two. So jump to the next stitch here and then just get the back um, loop left over. This yarn strand just leave it down in the middle and therefore you can get that stuck under there as well. So just continue to go and you will see it folding before your eyes and just continue to go all the way around. So this is round number 14 and this is what creates that beautiful ring that you'll see in your work. So once you get the swing of this it'll speed up for you and uh, it's pretty easy to go. And let's continue that and I'll see you at the end of this round. Okay now that I've come all the way around I'm just going to slip stitch it and be done with that one. So this is round number 14. So let's get rid of this yarn and let's move on and I've just got this peeled back you will uh, notice that this ring actually settles down the, the motif so it was kind of bowling up and now it should settle down. So you could just stretch it out and you can see it looks really awesome. So let's begin when we start the next round what's gonna happen is it's gonna lift it up even more and then you're gonna carry on then with the green and with the last row you just did. So let's uh, carry on to round number 15. So let's begin round number 15. So we're just gonna join in to any regular stitch that you wish and I want to um, sorry I just take a quick look. So I'm chaining I'm doing a slip stitch a chain three which counts as a double and then I wanna do another double crochet in the same one. So this round here is that we're just immediately gonna put six doubles in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five and six and then the next one will be two and this is the same one. So that's gonna be your repeat pattern going all the way around for round number 15 and please do that now and uh, so just six in a row and then uh, another two. Please do that. When you get all the way back around just join it to the top of the first chain three. So let's begin round number 16. 16 is very similar. What we're going to do is that we're gonna chain uh, three and then one double crochet in the same one as the join and now this time it'll be seven double crochets in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then two into the same one. If you notice it it's the first one of the group of the two is the same one that gets the two 
just so you know. So if you don't wanna keep count, just look for that. So seven in a row and then two, seven and two. Let's continue on for round number 16. So once you get to the end of round number 16, just join it to the top of the first chain three and conclude this. So now rounds number 17 through to the end are exactly what you already know with the Flora Afghan of converting the circle into a square. So I kept that uh, consistent between all of them in order to get there. So we're gonna move on to that next and I will be right back. So let's begin round number 17 and we're gonna start off with a new set of yarn here and we're going to um, just start off anywhere that you would like and we're just gonna start and attach. So all round number 17 through to the end as I mentioned all have the same commonality between all of them. So here we go. We're going to attach and then chain four which counts as a treble. We're gonna do another treble into that same one. So wrap the hook twice. So let's go over the first um, two sides and then you can do that. You can reverse the video if you would like to. Okay, so we're gonna do one treble into the next stitch and then we're gonna do three doubles into the next, sorry, three doubles in a row. So one, two and three. Then we're gonna do five half double crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four and five. Now there's going to be eight single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, five and on the fifth one I'm gonna show you a cheating technique. See this where you slipped? If you go right to where it's joining as well. So if I didn't finish that one and I go into that joining area. I can bury that and hide that in really good. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five and then we'll carry on. So six, seven and eight. Then we're gonna get bigger again. So we're gonna do five halves in a row. So we have one, two, three, four and five and then three doubles. So one, two, three and then finally one treble standing by itself. So we're gonna do our first corner. So our first complete corner is gonna be two trebles chain two and two trebles all into the same one. Okay, so I'm gonna review one more side with you. Ready to go? Here we go. We're gonna do one treble and then three doubles. And then five halves and then eight singles and then five halves and then three doubles and then one treble and then you're back on another corner. So it's two trebles chain two, two trebles. Now you can reverse this video back if you want to. On that last side it has it all complete and then what I'll do is uh, for you when we get all the way around if we're missing anything and it's not balanced then we can just cheat the system as if you're off a stitch as well. So I'll show you that just in case you need to know that. So carry on all the way around. I'm coming all the way around on round number 17 and I actually have the right stitch count. Sometimes I'm off 
by one. So what happens is that if you are off by one and you're missing one you can just put two stitches into the same one. If you have an extra one you could just make two stitches together and that will help you as well. So instead of frogging the whole thing to find out where your problem is sometimes it's better just to, to uh, do that. So in the very beginning stitch make sure that you do finish it and put two trebles into the same one. And what I'm recommending, we're gonna keep the same color, is that just do a half double crochet join to the top of the first chain four and that will put you directly into the middle of that. Just like that. So you will notice that when you, we zoom out here we're not quite square yet so we need at least another round to go. You can see it's still bulging and that's the whole point. So let's go on to row, round number 18 and just a couple more rows left after that. Let's begin round number 18. Chain up three counts as a half to our double crochet and then double crochet into the same corner. So this one's a easier one to remember. So there's gonna be three singles or three <laughs> double crochets in a row. So one, two, and three. So we've eliminated any troubles out from this point forward. Then there's gonna be three half double crochets. So one, two, and three. And then there's gonna be 18 singles in a row. So let's count those out as we do it. So we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This is 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And if you're right, there should only be six stitches left. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the next three are just a half. One, two, three. And then the three finals of this one before the corner is three doubles. And to turn the corner is just two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. And let me just go over one more side with you. Then you can reverse back to the video if you don't remember. Let's begin. Three doubles. Three halves. Eighteen single crochet. Then you have six left. So the next three are halves. One, two, and three. And then the final three are one double. And then the corner once again. The corners are two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. So please do that all the way around. This is round number 18 and meet me back here in just a moment and we are then almost concluded. Just two more rounds after that. When you get back around don't forget to put in your two double crochet right into the very last uh, corner that you started with and then just join it together with the half double crochet. And let's fasten that off and let's do the next round. Next round and next two rounds are really quite simple just following up with what you already have. No more extra special counting. That's it. And let's move on to round number 19 next. Let's begin round number 19 and we're just gonna use the same color. I decided I'm gonna use the same color as the ring and it will kind of box it in. Uh, up to you, your creativity and uh, what's important for you. Just join to any corner and chain three. That's your first half double crochet and then half double crochet again in the corner. Now every stitch around is just gonna be one, uh, one double crochet, no big deal. And then in the corners it'll be two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. That's as simple as this will ever get and that's what I want you to do all the way around for round number 19 and then join me back here. So it's one double crochet in each stitch, corners are, are two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and then 
just join it at the end and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm just coming all the way around and the last um, well the first the last uh, space which is the first one just joined together um, with half double crochet. So now we're gonna do the final round. This is it my friends. This is the end of the line round number 20 and we're just gonna fasten this off and then bring up our final color and hopefully you're enjoying today's tutorial. Let's begin round number 20 and they're all the same as I mentioned here. It gives you an equal count. Just join it to the um, any one of these and you can just do a um, uh, standing single crochet if you wish. So one and you wanna put in a total of five single crochets in the corner. So this is now number three, four and five. So that's the only thing that you have to watch for is the corners. So there's gonna be five single crochets and then you're just gonna apply one single crochet to each one of the stitches going across and then five single crochets in the next space. So please do that all the way around. This is the final round number 20 and this will conclude off today and I'll see you at the end of this round and do a quick recap. So now just coming to the very end I'm just gonna join it to the top of the first single crochet that we started with and that's it. That's round number 20. So there was a lot of rounds in this one because of the, the, the raised circle. So what I want you to do is just fasten off all your ends. If you've not been weaving in your ends please do so at this time and then you'll be good to go to put this together at the end or if you're doing something else with it. It's up to you. Your call. You are the creator. So that's it for now. We have one more to go in October of 2019. I believe it's the Queens and Lace and that's gonna be the final conclusion of the Flora and uh, it's gonna be an awesome. We are doing giveaways uh, at the end of this as well and you can see that in the book as well that we have for you. So that's it for now. Have a great day. We hope to see you again really soon and we'd love to see your creativity so make sure that you post it over on the Crochet Crowd Stitch Social and etc. So this will lay flat as you can see. No camera tricks. It is nice and flat. Until next time have a good one. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.